Hi everyone, it's Vicki Hobbs. I am a pregnancy, birth and postpartum specialist. Um, I work with pregnant women uh, quite a lot. I do hypnobirthing classes. I teach women how to have a calm, gentle birth, giving them tools and techniques to allow them to feel more, more calm, more relaxed and uh, more prepared for labour and birth as well. So today I really wanted to share uh, some information about your breathing techniques. So breathing is probably one of the most important um, techniques that you'll need during your labour and birth. So if you're not breathing properly, your body is going to be tense and tight and that's going to create more pain. So I've actually had hypnobirthing mums and the mums that are in my Back to Basics Birthing online program um, only use their breathing techniques to help them get through their active labour and then birth as well. So not using any drugs or any other form of medication or, um, or tools. In fact, I was at a birth last week where the mum purely used a TENS machine and her breathing techniques and um, her husband and I spent eight hours straight doing the, um, the hip squeeze, you know, really pulling her hips in and helping her to feel more relaxed and calm and putting pressure on the sacrum area. So I'm going to talk about that in, in a moment as well. So I wanted to talk about the three different breathing techniques that we recommend that you do during your labour. So one of the things that I teach in my Back to Basics birthing uh, class is flow breathing. Now in, hip birth, in our Hypnobirthing Australia program, we call this the relaxation breath. So it's basically rebooting your system after every contraction or every surge and allows your body to feel more relaxed and calm while you're waiting for your next contraction to start or your next surge to start as well. So for the purposes of this exercise, because I'm actually directing this at my back to basic birthing uh, group, I'm going to refer to that as the flow breath. We want that oxygen to flow down through your body, through your muscles, relaxing every part of your body, getting you ready for the next contraction to come. So basically, um, the way to do that, and when you're practicing, um, it's okay to, to count, but obviously during labor, we don't want you counting. So that's why it's really important for you to practice these techniques before you go into labor. So that you have it down pat, so you're not thinking in, in your mind, you know, counting in and out. Um, so with the slow breath, what I want you to do is you're taking a breath in through your nose, okay? And I'm going to talk about nasal breathing in a moment. Um, breathing in through your nose for, say, a count of, count of four, okay? So as you're breathing in, you're breathing in through your nose, and that's actually drawing your stomach outwards. It's like you're filling up this big balloon in your stomach. You're breathing in for a count of four, breathing out for a count of eight. Okay, so whatever your breath in, your breath in is, you're breathing out twice as long. So I just want you to practice that. So taking a deep breath in through your nose, one, two, three, four, and now you're actually breathing out through your nose for a count of eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight. So you're actually taking this really long breath out. And you want to do that for three breaths, okay? And that's actually going to reboot your body, like I said. It's actually maximising the oxygen through, um, through your body, down to your uterine muscles, so that they're working really efficiently to, to ensure that everything is calm and relaxed. Um, around the uterus, around your baby, and then you're just going into your normal breath. So after three um, flow breaths or relaxation breaths, you're actually just going into your normal breathing and you're waiting for your next contraction to start, okay? So while you're practicing, like I said, you know, just take in breaths and you can count. But then as you get used to that, there's no need to count because we don't want you in the neocortex part of the brain. We don't want you thinking about it. We just want you doing. Okay, when you're thinking, it means that you're not you're not relaxed, you're not calm, you're not just going into the zone. Okay, so um, some women say to me, oh, I can't count out, you know, I can't breathe out for that count of eight. 
So find what feels comfortable and right for you. So if that means breathing in for a count of three, breathing out for a count of six, that is going to be fine as well. Whatever your breath in is, you're breathing out twice as long. So I really want you to practice that. That, in, that is called your flow breathing. You're flowing everything downwards. You're allowing all those muscles, all those joints, all those ligaments to feel calm and relaxed and ready for your next contraction, okay? So, um, and one of the affirmations that I use, um, you know, while you're doing that, that flow breathing or that relaxation breathing is my mind is strong. My body is relaxed and my emotions are calm. And this is a, a really key thing for me as well. I really believe that women have to be focusing on all of those elements. So the mind, the body, the emotions. Your mind needs to be free of, of thoughts and, you know, thinking and, you know, just get all those thoughts out. So even if things are popping up all the time, just say to yourself, look, I can come back to that at any time. Okay, so you're really focusing on just releasing and letting go, relaxing everything that's going on up here um, because that's really important. Whatever is going on in your mind is affecting your body. Okay, your, your body is a robot to your mind. Okay, so we need to get um, any sort of negative thinking out of your mind so that you're really thinking in a positive way. So, you know, so that affirmation, my, my mind is strong, my body is relaxed and my emotions are calm. So when your body is relaxed, it's loose, it's limp, it's heavy with relaxation so that, you know, it makes it so much easier for your baby to move down. When you're tense and tight, everything is is squeezing together okay and it's making it so much harder for your baby to actually progress down so that takes me into the next bit which is the progress breathing so in hypnobirthing australia we call this your surge breathing so during your contraction a contraction being a surge in hypnobirthing during um your contraction you want to make sure that you're maximising the amount of oxygen going down to those uterine muscles. So they're working efficiently. You're working in flow together. They're not tightening up. They're allowing your baby to actually progress downwards. Okay. And when we see baby progressing downwards, that is progress. And with every surge, we're wanting you to, to make sure that you're breathing correctly so that you're maximising the oxygen going to those uterine muscles, maximising the oxygen going through to baby so baby doesn't go into distress. And at the same time, this is working on your body to help you feel more relaxed and calm. The more relaxed and calm you are, the easier your birth may be. And also, some women experience less pain or no pain. So I've had loads of women who have actually said to me, you know, just doing that breathing eliminates that pain so it does happen and for those people that say oh you know that's nonsense that's rubbish well you know we do have women you know on our website hypnobirthing australia website if you look at some of those stories um on there on my website so that's um www.vickihobbs.com we've got loads of stories on there where women say it wasn't painful it was intense but it wasn't painful so, you know, and this is because they're using their tools and techniques to ensure that their body is calm and relaxed. So when we look at this um, progress breathing, okay, and I call it progress breathing in my back to basics birthing, because as long as your baby is progressing downwards, then this is progress, okay? We want you to forget about what's happening with your cervix, okay? If your baby is progressing down, then your baby will sort out the cervix, okay? So as long as you're doing your breathing, your body is calm and relaxed, your mind is free of, of thoughts and, you know, negative thinking, and you let go of fear, okay? So that affirmation that I've talked about with the progress breathing is about your mind, your body, your emotions, letting go of fear, surrendering, surrendering to those sensations that you're feeling, but also ensuring that you're breathing to get that oxygen down to those muscles. Because we know that oxygen, um, sorry, that we, we know that muscles need oxygen to work efficiently. So if you, you think of that marathon runner, 
you know, they spend hours and hours a day training in their breathing techniques, okay? So um, birth is no different. Labor and birth is no different. You need to be breathing properly to ensure that you're, you're maximising um, the effects throughout your body. So with your progress breathing or your surge breathing, again, nasal breathing, so in and out through the nose. So as you breathe in, your belly is blowing up like a balloon, okay? So your belly's not shrinking in, it's actually moving out, and that's diaphragmatic breathing. So that's maximising the oxygen um, that you're receiving. So breathing in through your nose and breathing in as far as you can go. Okay, so that might be a count of 10 or 15 or 20. Okay, every woman is different. But as long as you're breathing in as far as you can go, hold it for a couple of seconds, and then you're breathing out as far as you can go. So it's the same breath in and out. So it's different to that flow breathing or that relaxation breathing, which is breathing in and then breathing out twice as long. All right, so with your progress breathing, that is during a contraction or during a surge. Breathing in through your nose, belly is blowing up like a balloon, and then you're breathing out, okay? So the same breath in and out. And you just continue to do that breath for the whole time that you're having a contraction. Okay, so that might mean that you're having three of these progress breaths or these surge breaths in one contraction or one surge okay so i was actually talking to one of my clients uh, not too long ago and she said that she knew that she would have to take three of those breaths during one surge or one contraction okay so she had it in her mind that once she got through that second breath she only had one more breath of that breath to to take until the the end of the surge Okay, so that's a really good way of looking at it and, you know, um, and gauging yourself how long that surge is going to take. Okay, so that was a really good way of her um, managing um, and coping through her um, surge breathing or progress breathing. Now, your birth breathing is different again. So with your birth breathing, this is where you're waiting for that mother-directed pushing. Okay, this is where your cervix is fully dilated and baby's head is right there and we want that baby to come down and out progressively. Okay, we don't want you forcefully pushing or doing that purple pushing. You're waiting for that, um, that urge to push and it's uncontrollable. You cannot stop yourself from pushing. It's one of those sensations. It's almost like when you're about to vomit you know, you can't hold it in. It's actually going to, to spray out, okay? So um, so when you get to that point where your body is ready to push your baby out, this is a sensation that you, you cannot mistake, okay? This is a sensation that you know this is where you need to push. Okay? And when we talk about pushing, again, you're breathing through that pushing process. Your, um, you know, the, the saying that breathe your baby out. It's not about, you know, you're just going to breathe and baby's going to pop out, okay? Um, it, it is more than that. But what it is is a, is a reminder that you don't need to take that breath in and hold and squeeze and push. Because when you're doing that, it means that everything is tightening up. Those uter your uterus is, is tightening up. Everything around your baby is tightening up. Okay, so what we want you to do is feel relaxed and calm. We want you to become loose and limp, soft and floppy. Okay, we want you to really be focusing on birthing your baby. Now, this particular technique, um, the only way you can really practice this before birth is on the toilet when you're doing a poo. So in our hypnobirthing classes, we call this poo breathing. Because the way you practice is when you're sitting on the toilet, okay? And again, it's about releasing and letting go, surrendering to those sensations, not trying to squeeze everything out, okay, but using that breath. So basically the breath is a, a quick breath in, okay, and then it's a, a, a really um, long sort of 
pushing sensation downwards. So you can actually feel the breath down your throat. You can feel everything moving downwards. And that is the whole um, purpose of this birth breathing is to move everything down. So it's kind of like... You can hear that breath in my throat. You can hear everything moving down. I can feel my pelvic floor moving down. Okay, and that is the sensation. Everything is moving and pushing naturally rather than you holding your breath. And notice my face, it's starting to go red. I'm becoming really uncomfortable. I'm feeling really hot. And what that's doing is connecting in with my sympathetic system. I'm going into that fight or flight response. Everything is starting to tense up. I'm start, you know, eventually I'll start to go purple. Okay, so that's not what we want. We want everything flowing, breathing, relaxed, calm, you know, um, and again, you know, the birth that I was at last week was an incredible example of that. And unfortunately, we didn't get to film that because the mum, you know, needed me up her head end in her ear, talking to her and giving her that confidence and reminding her to breathe. Okay, so normally I would be there um, taking photos and, and allowing, you know, mum and dad to actually see that, um, that experience, you know, afterwards. Um, but obviously, as a doula, um, you know, I have to do what the, what the mum really needs me for. So in this instance, it was incredible to see her really using her birth breath, you know, really taking in that really deep breath in and then breathing out through her nose really strongly. You know, it's a really strong breath as well because you can really feel that moving down. And that's where that saying, like I said before, the saying about breathing down to your baby or breathing your baby out because that's what you're doing. You're maximising the oxygen going down to baby. Um, you're maximising the oxygen going through to those muscles to ensure that, um, you know, you're more calm and relaxed. And, you know, it's just seeing that last week and, and seeing how this mum had taken on board all the information that she had learnt. Um, you know, I was so proud to be a part of that because that's what it's about. Um, you know, she was in an upright position. She was leaning over the top of um, the bed, kneeling on the bed, and that was her, her position of comfort. Okay, so when you're doing your breathing on the toilet, I really want you to focus on that real downwards energy. Everything is moving down. You're moving your breath down through your throat. You know, it's kind of like you're wheezing. And, you know, a couple of mums that I've supported, um, you know, you really notice that wheezing sound going down through their throat. So, um, it, you know, it's quite noticeable. And it's obviously very different to a mum who's being told, okay, take a deep breath, now hold and push, 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 push. Okay, everything is tensing up. And we want to get away from that. We want mums to experience this beautiful, gentle birth. Now, with, um, with this kind of breathing, what's going to happen is you're going to see baby's head start to emerge. That perineum is stretching really gently and slowly. Okay. And then when that surge or that um, contraction stops, you'll see the head retract. Okay. And this is what we want to see. We want to see that baby's head just moving forwards and moving back. And every move forward is a little bit further forward. Okay. Till eventually, you know, you start to see more and more of the head. You start to see more of the hair. The dads get excited. I can see the head. And this is where you need to get excited. You know, you can reach down and you can feel the top of your baby's head. Um, and that always gives mums that, that boost of energy. That, um, that desire to keep going. You know, um, she knows that she's right at the very end of that finish line. She's only got a few, you know, like maybe um, a couple of metres to go until that, that baby is, is out and then put um, skin to skin. So these are the things that I really want you to focus on is your flow breathing. Okay, so as you breathe in, you're breathing out twice as long. Okay, so that's really important. You do that for three breaths. 
okay? And that is actually going to reboot your system after you've had a contraction, all right? So you have your contraction, you're doing your progress breathing. So that's breathing in for as far as you can go, breathing out for as far as you can go, and then starting again. So you, you may do three or four of those breaths in one contraction. Then as soon as that contraction finishes, you want to go into your, um, your flow breathing. Okay, you want to flow that relaxation down through your body. You're allowing all those muscles to become, you know, nice and loose and limp again, getting you ready and prepared, rebooting the system, getting you ready for that next contraction. Okay, and then you go into that contraction, breathing in through your nose as far as you can go, breathing out through your nose as far as you can go, and then another breath. Okay, so like I said, you might be doing um, three or four of those breaths in one contraction. And then when you get that urge to push. So when we talk about this urge to push, like I said, is uncontrollable. You can't help, you know, wanting to push. You'll actually hear, um, you know, for your partners, your partners will start to see you go, <clears throat> you know, you might you might be starting to make that noise, okay? And that is that involuntary um, reaction to pushing. Your body is telling you that you're ready to push, okay? And this is where we see, um, you know, mums having that vaginal exam, you know, being told, oh, look, it looks like you're ready to push, so let's get you up on the bed, let's do a, a vaginal exam and see if your cervix is fully dilated. Um, and what can happen is, your cervix might be fully dilated, but your body still might, might not be 100% ready to push, okay? So sometimes once you're told, yep, you know, you're 10 centimetres dilated, now it's time to push, you might not be ready to push, okay? So try and delay that, um, that vaginal exam, you know, if you need it, go and, go and head and, and do that. Um, but sometimes, you know, that can play around with the mum's head as well. Okay, so um, so go with your body. You know, do what your body is telling you to do. Um, and like I said, it'll feel uncontrollable. You won't be able to stop, okay, when it starts. And that's, that's a really important part of the whole process. Now, when we talk about the parasympathetic system, so when you're doing this breathing, <clears throat> your flow breathing, your progress breathing, it's about connecting in with your parasympathetic system. So your paras parasympathetic system is a part of the nervous system that helps you to relax, okay? And this is why, you know, it's so important to do this nasal breathing, okay? When you're doing the nasal breathing, that's connecting in with your parasympathetic system. That is allowing your muscles to relax even more. Now, in saying that, sometimes when you go into labour, you might have a cold, okay? So I've had a bit of a cold today, so um, you know, I'm, I'm struggling a little bit with the, the nasal breathing. So um, even breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth is still okay, okay? And, you know, if you get to the point where you can't even do that, then obviously breathing in and out through your mouth um, in the same way is still going to help. It's still going to help everything to relax, okay? Now, your flow breathing, so your relaxation breath, can be used at any time. You don't have to be pregnant or, you know, in labour or giving birth to do this relaxation breathing or this flow breathing. It's, about, like I said, starting at the top of the head, everything just flowing down you're, you're releasing and relaxing all stress and pain letting go of all fears and doubts you know um also when you're doing your progress breathing you know your um your surge breathing you want to again be focusing on letting go of fears and doubts you want to ensure that you're not thinking i can't do this okay in your mind, I want you to keep saying, I can do this because I am doing this. Um, and again, I'll refer back to the birth I was at the other day. You know, with that mum, I was constantly saying to her, you can do this because you are doing this. Keep saying that in your mind. And bless her, you know, that is what she did. She continuously was saying in her mind, I can do this because I am doing it. 
you know, I'm strong, I'm confident, I'm fully prepared um, to birth this baby, okay, in a beautiful, gentle way. And that's exactly what she did. So, you know, as you're doing your breathing, um, <clears throat> I want you to also be focusing on what's going on up here. Okay, letting go of those fears and doubts, letting go of any negative thoughts or um, or experiences that you might be thinking of, um, you know, previously. Okay, so really getting getting right into your mind and focusing on releasing and letting go, surrendering to those sensations. Okay, and I know that women talk about wanting to be in control. Okay. When you're doing your breathing, you will feel more in control. When you're doing fast, erratic breathing, you will feel scattered and you will feel not in control. You will feel like nothing is going right. Okay, so um, also making sounds. So I wanted to talk about um, making sounds. When you're breathing, some women like to make lots of sounds. If you're doing that too early on, Sometimes that can give you a sore throat. Um, it can also make, you know, you're, you're using up more and more energy. Okay, so I always say try and leave that sound to, towards the end, you know, and that sound is actually helping um, um, to relax internally, that vibration from the sound, that toning, you know, and we want you to be um, making a sound like a cow, mooing like a cow, oh, low, deep, primal noises, not high-pitched cockatoo noises, okay? So I want you, you know, we have a bit of a laugh in my class, as I say, I want you to be thinking about the cow, you know, low, deep, primal noises, okay? So that vibration is actually moving down and helping all your internal organs um, to, to be massaged okay, with that vibration, releasing and relaxing, letting go of all stress and tension, okay, and just um, feeling more relaxed and calm and ready for that next contraction, okay. So also with your birth breathing, you know, as you're doing that, that breath out, you know, and you're releasing and letting go, I want you to be thinking of your perineum stretching and opening. Okay, so one of the affirmations that I use is my perineum becomes huge and stretches easily as I birth my baby. And one mum that I was um, in one of the groups I was in, she was like, oh, my God, I don't want to be thinking about my perineum becoming huge. You know, I don't want that to, you know, stay like that. It doesn't stay like that. It shrinks back to normal very quickly, okay? But at the, at, in that moment... We want you to be thinking about your baby's head stretching, opening that perineum gently and slowly and in time with those surges, okay? A beautiful, calm, gentle movement. Um, and like I said, your baby's head may move down and you'll see it and dads get really excited. And then after that surge, baby's head moves back again. And that's great. We want to see that, okay? So, um, because that means that your perineum is stretching nice and gently and slowly and allowing that head to come through nice, gently, slowly, okay? Um, <clears throat> the other thing that I wanted to talk, um, talk to you about is your... Um, when we're doing that flow breathing, like I said, this can be used at any time. So I really want dads and partners to be focusing on that relaxation breath as well, that flow breath. If partners are starting to feel anxious and stressed, they are going to transfer that energy through to the labouring mum, okay? And what happens is, and I've seen it so many times, is that mums kick in this maternal instinct, okay? Um, I need to look after him. I need to look after my birth partner. I, um, you know, I need to fix it, okay? So we want partners to be able to um, feel relaxed and calm and, um, and letting go of fears and doubts as well, okay? So that that is not 
going to affect the labouring mum while she's um, while she's doing her breathing. Um, you know, we we want that whole environment to be relaxed and calm. We want your environment to be set up so you feel safe, so you feel supported. You know, if you if you don't have any supportive people in that room, then your labour may progress in a different way. Okay, so we want. Um, you know, I've talked so many times in the Back to Basics Birthing. Um, online course that we really need your environment to feel safe we need all your support people so your healthcare providers i'm um, talking to you with respect you know making you feel like you're the most important person in that room and if you don't feel like that then you need to change it okay and this is where the birth partners become a really crucial part of the whole birthing process Okay, gone are the days where they're sitting in the corner and watching a movie or, you know, looking at their clock and thinking, how long is this birth going to go for? Um, now they have an important role. They are there to ensure that the mum feels safe, supportive, supported and calm. Okay, and, you know, making changes um, to ensure that that is what's happening with that mum. So she... Um, she doesn't have to worry about anybody else in the room. She is the most important part of that whole birthing process. Um, she is the one giving birth. So she needs to feel safe. She needs to feel listened to and she needs to feel respected. Okay. And if she's not, then you know that she's in the neocortex part of the brain. You know that she's thinking. She is going into that sympathetic system, that fight or flight response, okay? And we need her in the parasympathetic system. We need her getting oxygen and breathing. We need her to feel safe and calm. Otherwise, when she goes into that fight or flight response, what tends to happen is sometimes the, um, the labouring hormones start to where you know ease off and then your surges or your contractions start to get less they start to get longer apart um, and things start to change in the room as well okay so um, in the back to basics birthing course and also in the hypnobirthing course you have loads of tools and techniques to help you get back into that safe calm environment okay and that is the key okay mum needs to feel safe so that she is focusing on her, her baby, and her breathing to ensure that her baby is coming out calm and gentle. Okay, so that's all for today. I really just wanted to focus on that, that breathing technique um, to give you some examples um, of that breathing technique and how to do it. Um, you probably noticed my beautiful picture behind me so that was painted for me by Jane um, Delaford Ta Taylor in the UK um, she's just amazing like I gave her the brief I said you know um, my belief is you know you've got that maiden the mother and then the, the matron and I wanted that all interconnected so there you can see the tri swirls the three um, swirls they're interconnecting um, Starting off with the maiden and then we go to, to motherhood so you can see the, the mum there breastfeeding. And then the matron, you know, standing over and, and making sure that everything is safe, everything is calm and everything is interconnected and beautiful. So, again, I'm Vicky Hobbs. I hope you've enjoyed um, listening to me today and I will do another web webinar very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.